How to train efficiently. If you want to train your entire body in the shortest amount of time while maximizing results, it makes sense to pick exercises that recruit as many muscles as possible at the same time while taking your joints through a full range of motion. These are the compound exercises and include squats, deadlifts, bench pressing, overhead pressing, and pull-ups or chin-ups. Compound exercises are the most efficient ways to train because they stress the whole body in a way that isolation exercises like bicep curls or crunches can't. Because they are using so much muscle mass at the same time, they are much more demanding on the cardiorespiratory system, making them an effective conditioning modality on top of developing total body strength. Go to any commercial gym and you see people wasting a lot of time doing isolation exercises, which play very little role in the beginner if your goal is to get into shape. Isolation exercises can allow you to sneak in additional training volume without stressing your bony structures, tendons, and ligaments the way that compound exercises tend to. Yes, compound exercises also cause changes in connective tissues and not just muscles. Once you get to a certain level of strength, it is not feasible to just do big compound lifts every single workout because your bones and tendons need time to recover between training, but your muscles will still be able to handle more training volume. Isolation exercises provide a way to train smaller muscles while allowing the connective tissues in other areas to recover. But if you're just starting, you probably shouldn't be doing them at all because they will detract from your progress on more useful exercises. Bench pressing and overhead pressing are already using your triceps and shoulders. You don't need to do tricep pushdowns or shoulder flies on top of it, especially if you are just starting. If you have been bench pressing and overhead pressing in some form consistently and your progress has plateaued, or you're looking for some extra training volume on days between big compound lifts, that's fine. Additionally, pull-ups, chin-ups, and rowing exercises already use your biceps. You don't need to do bicep curls if you're just starting out, and it is likely to interfere with recovery from these more useful exercises. The same goes for doing kickbacks and clamshells. Unless you are rehabilitating something, you are much better off focusing on squatting and deadlifting, which already recruit the same muscles, plus a lot more. Doing banded exercises in addition to squats and deadlifts is generally a waste of time, especially if you are just starting out. And even then, as discussed in a previous post, single leg RDLs, split squats, step ups, and barbell hip thrusts are going to be much more useful additions. One more thing, if you're truly putting effort into getting proficient in the compound exercises, you aren't going to have much energy left to do isolation exercises. And if you do, it's likely that you're half-assing the compound exercises. Remember, compound exercises is where most of the benefits will come from, and you need to be putting most of your energy there. The muscles that are generally targeted through isolation exercises are already being trained with compound exercises, making them superfluous for most people. Isolation exercises are an afterthought and are better left out altogether if you are just starting out.